Paragraph, page two, reads, highlighted just in yellow so we can save on time. But I've got the whole uh, link, link to these, this seven-page fact and right, right in, the, in, in the info sidebar, just to the right-hand side. Okay, let's read it. This uh, was a very clever ambush by, by, by Miss Acton. I have not had access to any of these emails since late 2004. If my rights to civil practice note 5 are respected, better and affirmative answers. Appellant's factum, first paragraph, page 3. Let's read the highlights in yellow. If civil practice note 5 were respected, or even if Mr. Acton had 24 hours of getting the exhibits before trial, then Mr. Acton would have been able to answer something like this instead. Yes, I sent these emails, but could you please read, or would you like me to read, the whole email, because you have only read, for the record, the last three sentences of the first paragraph of this email. That shoots down lie number six. That's my appellant intervention. We'll get into it furthermore as we progress on to the next, you know, line up after we're done line number 10, you'll see that clearly there's a lot of appellant intervention but uh, the judges and Miss Actum, over or her name is Mrs. Rhonda Sales now, stepped over the boundaries of the rules of court and and the boundaries of the acts of the law. We'll get into that after we do uh, lie number ten. Back to the lies. Lie number seven. We're gonna not call that a lie. We'll call it a half truth because there is some truth into it. But there's something missing there. It says both parties had access to all the pretrial procedures available to litigants. Well, that, that is all right. But the thing is, it should have said both parties had access to all the pretrial procedures, but Mr. Acton was ambushed with exhibits that, were, that could not be adduced pursuant to Alberta Rule Court 158.5 subsection 1e and they're because they were never produced into the action they could have only been served seven days before trial to have that set on on the judgment why would that be a lie to have that said there that would not be a lie if those judges did write that down there and if they didn't uh, lie, lie number eight says Mr. Actum could not be said to be surprised by by an email he sent himself. Well, how is someone going to rent, remember emails that they sent like three years ago out of hundreds of hundreds of email a person may send? I sent, you know, hundreds of them every month. And the bottom line is they were never produced into the action. So it comes back to Alberta Rule Court 158.5, subsection 1E. They could not be adduced into the trial. I would have not mind them being used as as uh, to, you know for her, for Mrs. Sales to cross examine on but I would have you know would have been more appropriate for me to know what I was being cross examined on before being cross examined on it and line number nine that is that is something I would call it I, I, would, I wouldn't call it a lie I would call it something that the, the three judge appeal panel did not know because I was not entitled to examination for discovery. My ex laid false criminal charges against me and she, her lawyer went to a hearing with, with my old lawyer, Wilton Thorstenson, and her lawyer said, Miss Acton refuses to get in her room with Mr. Acton. She's too terrified with him. But anyways, what they put right there is they they said something that they did not know. Well, you want to know something, three judge appeal panel? I had I was not entitled for examination for discovery. And having not and line number ten, having not availed himself to the options open, he cannot now claim he was treated unfairly by taken by surprise. The options were only available to the other party when it comes to the the Canada Evidence Act C5 because Canada Evidence Act C5 it's an act respecting witnesses and evidence and I was the witness and it was the evidence 
I was to be respected where I shouldn't shouldn't be having to answer uh, to exhibits I knew nothing about exhibits M to R just listen to the video it's just nonsense let's get on to line 11 line number 11 the trial judge clearly demonstrated an understanding of the applicable principles relating to division of matrimonial property from a divorce we had zero exemptions. Justice uh, Karen Horner's judgment yielded my ex-wife, Rhonda Sales, otherwise known as Miss Actum, a huge whopping split of more than 95.5% of matrimonial property in her favor. And we're together for more than 14 years. She uh, it yielded her more than $83,266.58. Then leaving me with a measly 5.5%, less than $3,751.12 to me. This threw me and my second family into a deep pit of poverty. This is all taken from uh, 53 to uh, E55 of, uh, of, volume, uh, of volume 3 of my appeal books. Exhibit uh, 2A1. Uh, statement of division of assets and separation. So I inform the uh, the Court of, of Appeals of, of, of Alberta three judge appeal panel uh, about the statement of division of ass assets of separation on uh, on page uh, six of my factum, and I also uh, Justice Karen Horner says that I had an RRSP in her judgment. I have never had an RRSP in my judgment. I've never had an RRSP in my life. So I don't know where, why it's saying in the judgment that I had an RRSP. And they uh, dismiss my appeal. So I take my, uh, you know, I take, I go one step further, I go to Supreme Court of Canada, I uh, make application for a leave to appeal. I tell them about the fraud that the Court of Appeals committed. I tell them to actually put the, uh, put it on hold in advance until they see a CMA accountant, certified management accountant's uh, balance sheet on it. But no, they dismissed my case too because they're law liars. They want to protect their colleagues' integrities instead of the, they want to protect the integrity of their fraud instead of the integrity of the court.